Okay, <clears throat> let's dive in. So I'm picking it up on number eight. This is practice exam uh, three, part two. Part two, question number eight. So um, they give me that, and they want me to figure out the answer on that. How do we do that? Me remember, part one will be, what's part one? Part one is the calculator part, huh? Part one, you can use your calculator. Part two, you cannot. Also, another thing I did, I rearranged the part one and the part two. I actually had to photocopy the whole exam again over duplicating. I feel like I'm wasting some paper. But anyway, I didn't want some of the real messy number ones, uh, that I put those on part one so you have your calculator. I, I thought they were a little messy without a calculator. So there's been a little bit of a I'll point it out as we go. I'll say, hey, this one's really on part one now. You really get your calculator. Anyway, I'll show you as we go. So anyway, so this one, this one is legitimately on part two. The, the, no, you've got to be able to do this without a calculator. This, this one, the numbers aren't too bad. So this will legitimately be on part two. Remember, part two, which I'm on right now, is no calculator. So you should be able to do this with no calculator. Okay, how so? Well, as you look at that, you'll have on your 3 by 5 card, right, that the sign, when you see sine, cos, and cos, and sine, I hope you'll remember, or you have written on your paper, sine of A plus B, right, which is sine, cos, cos, sine, A, B, A, B, and sine is our friend, so whatever sine is here, it's the same, so that's going to be minus, minus, isn't it? It's going to be minus in the middle, minus in the middle, or plus with plus. It goes, sine keeps the same same sign, right? If it's minus here, it's minus there. If it's plus here, it's plus there. Remember, cosine is the one that reverses it, right? So anyway, when you see this, you should think, oh, that's this right here. That's this right here. And what's the A? The A is the 260 and the B is the 20. 260, 20. See, isn't that exactly this? Same thing. So what is all of this, all of this equal to? It's equal to that. Right? So it's equal to the sine of the first angle minus the second angle. The 260 minus the 20, huh? Does everybody see that? Which is the sine of 240. Sine of 240. Right? So can you find the sine of 240 now? <clears throat> so it's all come down to this. You do need to be able to do the sine of 240 without a calculator. Use the unit circle. Go ahead. Let me give you a second. I'm going to go print something for you. Let's get back to it. You okay with the sine 240? So I'm going to hand you the unit circle in a minute. So I just think also that's something that might help you. So 240. So where is that? They, well, here's 270. <clears throat> Excuse me. 240 is right there, just 30 off of the 270. Right? And then, um, so that means over and down. So it was funny and slow, wasn't it? Anyway, it's back the small amount, down the large amount. Remember, small, medium, large? So it's back a half down root 3 over 2, isn't it? That's the coordinates of this point right here. This is back a half down root 3 over 2. Okay, so what? Well, cosine is x, sine is y, isn't it? Remember all that from the unit circle without a calculator? So, But you can put the unit circle on your 3x5 card. So what, let's get back to the question. Then sine 240, sine is that one, minus root 3 over 2, c. We good? Do all that without a calculator? At least if you have the unit circle written on your 3x5 card, which I'm going to hand you in a minute, just to be really clear on that. Let's move on. Any questions? Feel free to stop me. So we don't have to put the unit circle on our card? You do. Yeah, you, yeah, good. You've got it. Yeah, put the unit circle. But I wanted to hand it to you just to make sure it's absolutely clear and you can put it right on your card. Great. All right. So, um, so there we go. Cosine 135 plus cosine 120. What in the world are we supposed to do with that? Well, if you just add those angles, you're going to get cosine of something you don't know. 255, I mean, that's not helpful. That's a big uh, unknown, right? I, unless you, I can't do that without a calculator. Cosine, I just added them. That, that's not what they want you to do. So what do they want you to do? They want you to use that cosine of A plus B formula, huh? Instead. Let me, let me, let me just, come on, eraser. There we go. Um, so they want me to do cosine of A plus B. This is A, this is B. Um, okay, so how do you do that? That would, what's the formula? Co, you have it on your 3 by 5 card. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine, A, B, A, B. And cosine, it's opposite in the middle, right? If it starts with plus, then he's minus in the formula. Or if he starts with minus, he's plus in the formula. All right, so let's do it. So then that's so the A is 135. So this is 
cosine 135, and the B is 120, 135, 120, right? Then we just got to figure all those out. All right, so can you do that? So that means without a calculator, unit circle, can you figure out those? Let me pause again. At, looking at that unit circle picture then, you just find the, it's nice to have the angles in both, on this thing, if you notice, they have the angles both in degrees and radians, it's just very, very convenient. I'd, I'd put exactly that on your 3 by 5 card. Yes, I do want you to write it, you think, can't we just use this? I think there's benefit in writing this. Well, I, I, there's, there's educational, psychological studies which show there's great benefit in writing things out. As we write things, they imprint on our mind. So yes, I am wanting that for you. I want you to actually write this on your 3 by 5 card, have to look over all those angles, write all those things down. It's for your benefit that I require, but not your torture, but for your benefit. So yeah, you have to put this on your 3 by 5 card. You can't just use the sheet. So um, let's find 135 degrees, which is somewhere. There it is, 135. You see it right there. And it says, uh, oh, the negatives are, that's the only thing I don't like about this. They didn't make the negatives very big. They, I like everything else about it. They show the quadrants. They show which, which trig functions are positive and negative. You know, they show so much good stuff. But they made the negatives too small, I think. It's negative root 2. See that little tiny negative sign there? So there's that one. And then the other one is 120, which I don't have room for now. So let me put the 120 here. So 120 is right there. And that one is negative a half positive root 3 over 2, right? All right, so with that in mind, and you know cosine is always x, sine is always y. Cosine is always x, sine is always y. So cosine of 135, looking at that chart, 135 cosine. So negative root 2 over 2 times cosine of 1, so that's that one, cosine of 120, go to 120, go to x, negative a half, minus sine of 135, go to 135, take the sine, root 2 over 2, times uh, sine of 120, go to 120, take the y value, root 3 over 2, there we go, that good? So put that right in your 3x5 card for the exam. Speed up your angles. It's even quicker than using a calculator. So um, what happens then? Two negatives. Negative times negative is positive. Root 2 over 4 minus. These guys multiply root 6 over 4. There we go. Which answer is that one? What is it? Oh, yeah, that's confusing, huh? Because as you look at them at first, it doesn't look like it's any of them, does it? But yeah, it's actually, what is it, D or C? Is it C? Yeah, let me grab the answer. I, don't need, I need the answers in front of me here. So um, this is number 10. It's B. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, if you, um, they all look kind of different. If you take that root 2 right here and you distribute What's that going to be? That's going to be root 6 minus root 2. But it's a, oh, it's a negative root 2, though. Yeah, I know. This is probably confusing for you, huh? Let, let me help. Let me take this one and show you. See how that minus sign right here is in the front? I would take that minus sign from the front and put it right on the root 2, and then I would distribute. All right? Let that minus sign come up right here on the root 2, and then let the root 2 distribute, and you'll get minus root 6, plus root 2 over 4, which is exactly this, minus root 6, plus root 2. Same answers. Everybody see that? Remember, the, the order doesn't matter, but the sign in the front does. So, so it doesn't matter, like, whether the root 2 comes first or the root 6. It just matters what sign is in the very front of them. You can shift the order all day long. Doesn't matter. All that matters is the sign in front. So the, the root 6 has a negative in front of him. The root 2, in my final answer, the root 2 has a positive in front of him. So when I distribute, they just happen to write it a little different. When I distribute that, that one up there on B, you know, oh, no, the other thing is make sure negatives in front of a fraction. You guys know that, right? Negative in front of the fraction, you can put it on the top or you can put it on the bottom. Both are okay. You don't put it on both. Two negatives would be positive. That would be wrong. You with me? A ne let me say it again. Negative 
in front, I'm just giving an example with a half, simple fraction, right? Negative in front of a fraction goes to the top only or the bottom only, not both. Because two negatives would be positive. That would be different. So negative in the front, I could just put it on the top. That's what I did here. Negative in the front, I just said, hey, just stick it up there in the top for purposes of distribution and then let that negative root 2 go to both. And, and when you get this and you go, oh, so it's a negative root 6. Yep, negative root 6. Positive root 2. Yep, positive root 2. That's my answer. Everybody good with that? Questions? All right. Keep moving then if you're okay with that. Number 13 says tangent theta is 24 7. Theta is in quadrant 3. And they want me to find sine 2 theta. <clears throat> so here it is again. Same, same kind of thing, right? Um, sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta. Cos theta. So right away, using the same formula that we used last time, 2 sine theta cos theta, so I need to find sine and cosine. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to draw this triangle. Oh, this one also, let me make special note, this one also is moved, let me write it over here, moved to part one, can use your calculator. So this one also, you will be allowed to use your calculator because the numbers get messy. So let's draw a little unit circle. This one's in quadrant three. So we're down here in quadrant three. So I'm going to draw a triangle, a little right triangle in quadrant three. And here's my theta. You always put theta to the x-axis, don't you? The x-axis, not the y-axis, right? We always do it as a reference angle, referring to the x-axis, because that's where zero starts. Okay, so now, um, what's it say about tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? Remember Sokotoa? Sokotoa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this, so here's the hypotenuse. Let me write it a little more room here. here here's the uh, hypotenuse because that's the side across from the right angle, not touching the right angle. So theta, this is the side adjacent to theta, next to theta, adjacent means next to, this is the side opposite from theta, right? So tangent is 24 over 7, opposite over adjacent, 24 over 7. So now I can use that and the Pythagorean to find the hypotenuse, can't I? a squared plus b squared is c squared. So let's do that. So we say, okay, a squared plus b squared is c squared. So uh, 7 squared plus 24 squared is c squared. You make sure the hypotenuse is the one alone, the c squared. So that, I'll let you, like I said, this would, you have your calculator for this because these are bigger, messier numbers. 49, is that like 576 or something? 625. 625? Uh, no, uh, you mean the full final answer. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just mean the 24 squared. Is that 576? Yeah. Is that, is that what it is? Five, and then you, so you're saying 625 when you add them together? Yeah. That's what that is. Thank you. And you get to there and then root it. Is that, that's 25, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So C is 25, yeah. So yeah, you can use your calculator for all of that. That'll, this will be on the calculator part. No, whoop, not root of 25. Why did I write that? The root, rooting, as you guys know, is it disappears after you do the root, right? The root's gone. It's just regular 25. Okay, so we have our little triangle. Now we can finish up the problem. How so? Well, here's what we need. So it becomes 2, and then what's the sine of theta? Well, you know sine. So Katoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. 24 over 25, and cosine of theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, 7 over 25. So there we go. So we just do the same thing we did last time, put the 2 over 1, and just to multiply top, 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 and bottom, 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 right? On your, and you have your calculator. And let me know, because I can't do it. What is it? 
Oh, I forgot about the signs. Thanks. Wendy's right. I forgot about the plus minus stuff. Yeah, all students take calculus. We're in quadrant three, which means tangent is positive, but sine and cosine are negative, huh? Which it says on that three by five card also. I'm the three by five card. It says on the unit circle picture in quadrant three, right? Notice it says positive is tan and cotan, negative is sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant. It's kind of nice. How's that on there? My favorite one is I searched online. So, um, yeah, so which one? So sine and cosine are negative. So this one is negative, and this one is negative because sine and cosine are both negative. Yeah, wouldn't it be a bummer to do what I was about to do and do all that good work and then forget the signs right at the end and get the... Of course, I would have got lucky, huh? Because the two negatives were going to be positive anyway, but that won't always work out. So be careful. Watch those signs. Don't forget. It's easy. I see how it's easy to do. Remember the all students take calculus thing for the signs at the end. Both the sine and cosine are negative in quadrant three, right? Only tangent is positive in quadrant three. All right, multiply it together. So what's two times 24 times seven? I have no idea. 336. 336 over 625, huh? Positive, two negatives make positive. There we go. And you'll have your calculator for that. Is that good? Feel doable? A little practice, I think this is doable. All right, you have no questions? I'll move on, let's see, to number 14. All right. Number 14, so cosine squared, 22.5 degrees, minus sine squared, 22.5 degrees. All right, so it says some stuff at the top. That, that, those words are meant to really help you. It says, write it as sine cosine of a double angle, then find the exact value of the expression. So in other words, I'm supposed to say it's like sine of 2 times 22.5 or cosine of 2 times 22.5. Get the idea? That's what they're saying. When they say rewrite the expression as the sine cosine or tangent of a double angle, they mean twice that angle. What, why? Because twice 22.5 times 2 is, um, what, what is it? 45. 45, thank you. 45. It's one that we're used to. See what I mean? 22.5 is a weird one. We don't have, we don't have that in our unit circle. 22.5, right? And this will be on the no calculator part, right? No calculator part. So we can't do 22.5, right? So you double it and you get 45, and that is on our... That is one of our unit circle ones. So we think, oh, I'm supposed to double that angle, which is what they're saying in the words, double the angle. Okay, so I'm supposed to double the angle. Well, how do you know if it's sine of double or cosine of double, 45? How do you know which one it is? Oh, which one becomes cosine squared minus sine squared? So have on your 3 by 5 card the formula that it is cosine, right? It is cosine of 2 theta or whatever, that's cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Right? You have that formula on your 3 by 5 card? Now, let me talk you through that formula a little bit to make sure you understand what it's saying. It's saying if you have the, the regular cosine, this is just normal cosine, first power, normal, 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 of a double angle, if you have cosine of twice an angle, that'll be cosine squared of the regular angle minus sine squared of the regular angle. Everybody see that? So that means if you have cosine of 2 times 22.5, by the way, which is 45, as we said, that'll be cosine squared of just the regular angle minus sine squared of just the regular angle, which is exactly what I want. This is what they're asking me for in the original question. So it is equal to this. In other words, regular cosine of 45 degrees. I can do that. That's right on my unit circle. Just look at 45 degrees. It says root 2 over 2. Done. Does that make sense? So this is the formula you need. And it says cosine squared minus sine squared of a regular angle is normal cosine of double that, which is 45, and that we have on the unit circle. 
which you'll have with you on your 3x5 card. Good. Questions on that one? It's feeling a little more doable than it did on Wednesday? All right, so that's 14. We did 15. We're on to 16. We're getting close. I'll move on if you're okay. This will be on YouTube later. Part 1 and Part 2. Number 16. Says sine theta is minus 3 fifths. Theta is in quadrant 4. And they want the sine of theta over 2. <clears throat> Sine of theta over 2. Well, on your 3 by 5 card, again, you'll have the formula. It's plus or minus the square root of 1. I forget. Is it plus the minus over 2 like that? 1 minus cosine. Oh, cosine, cosine. That's it. That's what's messing me up. Thank you. It's 1 minus cosine, and the other one is plus for cosine theta over 2. Yeah. Good. So that, that'll be on you. You don't have to memorize it. Just put it on your 3 by 5 card. You'll have that formula. So you're seeing exactly which formulas to put on your 3x5 card, right? Um, now, how do, what do we do with that? Well, um, theta is in quadrant 3, and they're saying find the sine of theta over 2. Okay, well, it's, it's this. So I just got to compute that, and that is the sine of theta over 2. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, that means... It's plus or minus, and I'll resolve the, well, actually, let's, let's resolve the plus or minus right now. Theta is in quadrant 4, right here, between 270 and 360, right? Somewhere theta is here. You with me? But they're not asking me for theta. Okay, I, I think this is something maybe um, you might not be clear on. Let, let me help you. I don't, I don't remember being really clear on it during the homework. I, I don't know if we didn't have one exactly like this or, or what. So let me be super clear with you right now. Y'all dialed in with me? This is new, I think. I think this is, this is new. Notice what, what, am I, what is the question? Sine of theta? No, theta over 2, right? So the angle... Is not theta. It's half theta. Theta over 2 is the same thing as half theta, right? It's half theta. Okay, what does that mean? So if theta, theta is in quadrant 4, where's theta over 2? Because that's my real, I'm trying to find the sign of theta over 2, not theta. So, I don't, so theta over 2 is not in quadrant 4. Right, and that's what's going to determine the plus or minus in the front. You tracking with me? That's what will determine that. So where's theta over 2? Well, if I tell you theta, theta itself is in quadrant 4 between 270 and 360. I'm hearing a little bit of talking from the back. It's okay to help each other, but please make sure other people aren't distracted. Between 270 and 360, if theta is between 270 and 360, well, then cut that in half. Cut both those in half. Half of theta... Must be divided by 2, divided by 2, what do you get? 135, 180. Theta over 2 is between 135 and 180. Where's that? Here. Because this, this, um, this is 90 and 180. So 135 and 180, theta over 2 is here. It's in quadrant 2. Did you see that little maneuver? Right? So if theta is in quadrant 4 between 270 and 360, then cut those both in half, 135, 180, theta over 2, which is, you know, it's actually in the second half of quadrant 2. 135 is right there. But who cares? It's just in quadrant 2. That's all I really care about. Theta over 2 is in quadrant 2. That'll tell me all students take calculus. Sine is positive in quadrant 2, positive, because this is sine of theta over 2. And theta over 2 is in quadrant 2, where sine is positive. You guys with me? That's kind of tricky, huh? Trick is they gave me theta quadrant 4, but then asked me about theta over 2. The real question is theta over 2. So I had to cut both the quadrant 4 numbers in half. 
to find, right? Because I knew theta was between 270 and 360. So having that theta over 2 is between 135 and 180, quadrant 2. Good? All right. So now we know theta over 2 is in quadrant 2. We know this is positive, so I can get rid of the, the negative option. I know it's positive whatever it is. Let's figure out whatever it is now. All right. How do I do that? Well, I need 1 minus the cosine of theta. I need the cosine of theta. How do I get that? All I've got is the sine of regular theta. Everybody see, you've got to keep your eye on the ball between regular theta and theta over 2. Keep kind of moving back and forth. You okay? I'm trying to find the cosine of regular theta. Well, they gave me the sine of regular theta. You know what to do. Draw the little triangle, blah, 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 right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get rid of all this mess, if that's okay. It'll be on YouTube. So let's... Uh, Draw, you know, several times we're drawing these little triangles, aren't we? So let's draw it. And it doesn't, you don't really have to put it in a certain quadrant. Just, just make yourself a triangle, whatever. That's good enough, you know. Theta, there it is. Now, this, this is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side. This is the opposite side. Right, just make a little triangle. What does it say? Sine of theta is negative. Don't worry about the, the signs. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out the signs in a minute. Negative three-fifths. Well, maybe I should put it in quadrant. Maybe I should. Whatever. Do, do whatever you want. Theta, theta I'll, I'll draw it. Okay, theta's in quadrant four. This is theta. I'm talking theta now, not theta over two. Right? Everybody say theta. Regular theta. Yeah, that's in quadrant four. Sine is, this is the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse. This is the opposite side. So sine, as you know, so Katoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is three over 5, but that's a negative 3. Negative 3 over 5. So can I find the adjacent side right here? Yep. Pythagorean theorem, as usual, right? Pythagorean, a squared plus b squared is c squared. So that would, now which one is c in the a squared, b squared? Which one of these guys is c? The 5, because he's the hypotenuse. Oh, and do you recognize that one? 3, 4, 5. This is going to be 4. Is that okay? You do the Pythagorean thing. It's 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5, isn't it? I'll, I'll do it formally. So it'd be a negative 3 squared plus b squared. That's 9 plus b squared is 25. Oops, I'm getting kind of sloppy. 9 plus b squared is 25. If you subtract 9 from both sides there, you're going to get b squared is 16. So B is 4, as we said. B is 4. All right. So what does that mean? Well, that means we can get cosine of regular theta, because this is a regular theta triangle. We can get cosine. What's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is 4 fifths. But careful, is it negative 4 fifths or positive 4 fifths? Well, all students take calculus. Always watch the signs. Really important. If you mess up the signs, everything, wouldn't it be a bummer to do all the good work? I think that's what happens to a lot of people. They do all the Pythagorean good, and they draw the triangles, and they just don't watch the signs carefully. So right here, cosine, cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, isn't it? All students take, as you, did I confuse you now? The, the theta is in the fourth. I'm talking theta now. I'm not doing theta over two. Right? That's what the formula says. It says you want to find theta over two? You do this work with regular theta. That's what the formula says. It's a relationship between half a theta and regular theta. So it's saying, you want, you want sine of half a theta, theta over 2? It's 1 minus cosine regular theta, all over 2. Square root, plus or minus. So cosine regular theta, cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. Regular theta is in the fourth quadrant, where cosine is positive. So it is just positive 4 fifths there. Good so far. Now we've got to do a little algebra to clean that up. But everybody good to that point. Now, let's do some algebra. This is a tough, so this is definitely a tougher problem. One of the harder, one of the harder ones for sure. And those identities are tricky too, but we're gonna practice those here in a couple minutes. So, all right, so bring it up to here. We've got plus the square root, one minus four fifths. Because if that had been a negative four fifths, it would have been two negatives positive now, wouldn't it? If it had been negative, but it's not. It's a positive four fifths. Okay, anyway, what do you do? You, do y'all remember? What do you do now to uh, finish this thing up, to clean this thing up? Uh, multiply, by five. 
Multiply by the 5. Yeah, by that extra. See, because this is fractions over fractions, isn't it? We don't leave it like this. How do you fix it? You multiply by that. Now, 5 is like an extra denominator. He's a denominator in the numerator, isn't he? He's what's making the mess. Get rid of him. Multiply everybody by whatever that extra denominator is. Top and bottom, though, so you don't change anything, right? You got to do the top and bottom. Cancels it right there, doesn't it? Remember, that's how we always handle that. We multiply by that extra denominator, so you get positive square root. 5 times 1 is 5 minus 4 over 2 times 5 is 10, right? Because these canceled. And that is square root of 1 tenth. And that's almost the answer. Boy, this problem just won't end. Why is that not the answer right there? No root in the bottom. No roots in the bottom. So you know what to do about that. Multiply top and bottom by root 10. You with me? Whatever you have. Because that root over the entire fraction means root top and bottom, doesn't it? So you've got to multiply top and bottom by root 10. So 1 times 10 is just root 10. The bottom, root 10, root 10? Plain 10, huh? We all good with that? Remember, two of the same roots, make a plain one. Root 10, root 10, plain 10. Remember that? That always happens. Root 5, root 5, plain 5. Root 7, root 7, plain 7, right? There we go. Questions. Because root 10, root 10 is root 100. And root of 100, plain 10, right? That's why that's true. Yeah? Rudy. Are you multiplying the... Root one times the root ten right there at the bottom. The very, yeah. Yeah. That's the, the very the top part is root one times root ten. Right. The, and that equals. Yeah. So so let me help. So when you're multiplying roots, the inside numbers multiply. So it's the root of one, root of ten, which is root of one times ten, which is root of ten. Yeah. On the bottom, it's root ten, root ten, which is root of a hundred. Yeah. Which is plain ten. Yeah. Makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, right. So just multiply. Yeah, if, if the little rules confuse you, just multiply them plain, straight at first, and then if you can simplify, simplify. So root 1, root 10 is root 10. Can't do anything with that. Root 10, root 10 is root 100. Definitely could do something with that. Plain 10. That's all that's happening. Yeah. Uh, what do you, uh, do you divide the two, uh, 270 and the 360, and then you don't, uh, and then you look for theta by itself? Right, because, but yeah, good question, because they're asking, notice, for theta over 2. The original question here, it's kind of raised, is find not theta, but theta over 2. Not theta, but theta over 2 is really the question I'm answering, right? All this formula is for what sine theta over 2 is. So I've got to say, well, where is theta over 2? Theta, plain theta is quadrant 4, but that's not where theta over 2 is. Where's theta over 2? Well, it's half a theta. So I had to go to quadrant 4, right? So I had to go to quadrant 4, which is here, and say, wh wh what is quadrant 4? It's between 270 and 360. That's, that's where theta is, right? This is where theta is here in this quadrant. But that's not where theta over 2 is. Where's theta over 2? We've got to divide both these by 2. If theta is, if I told you, hey, Guys, I'm thinking of a number between 270 and 360, and I'm calling it theta. That's basically what they're saying to me. Theta is in quadrant four, which means theta is between 270 and 360, right? If I said, hey, I'm thinking of a number between 270 and 360, and then I cut it in half, what's it between now? You'd go, oh, cut it in half? Okay, cut them all in half. 130, so the half your number is between 135 and 180. Does that make sense logically? Which is, which is right here, 180, and this is 90, so it's really, you know, it's, it's right in this zone right here. Here's where theta over 2 is, between 135 and 180. So it's like me saying, hey, I'm thinking of a number between, between 6 and 10, but then I cut it in half. Well, now it's between 3 and 5. Make sense? Yeah. So they're, they're giving me, they told me theta's in quadrant 4, but then they asked me to find theta over 2, right? That was the question. Find theta over 2, and they told me where plain theta was. Quadrant four, so I had to cut those quadrant four numbers in half. Is that good? Rudy? Is it the same for all of the trig functions? Like if, if, if we were the same problem with like cosine or like. Yeah, oh yeah, it's just, it's just a matter of theta and theta over two. That's all it's a matter of, right, exactly. It doesn't matter what trig function. They're just saying, here's theta, where's theta over two? Well, half. Half, yep. yeah. I don't know why that didn't come up because in the homework, I don't know. Hmm. Um, all right, on to 17 we go. So 17 is, okay, so these are the equation ones. 
two sine. These are tough. This, this, this test is it's not root x. This test is kind of challenging, I think. Like I said, I think this is the hardest test we will take. So I wanted to give you another day and did the stuff I did. All right, so um, how do we solve there? For, so this is solutions. This is that last section we did in homework, uh, which is, I think, the hardest section. So solve. These are the ones that say find all solutions of the equation. Do, do those stand out different to you? Do you see how they're different? Right? It's solving for x. We didn't really solve for x any other time, I don't think. Anyway, so let's just, uh, what do we do here to solve for x? Subtract. Yeah. Get, get this load. So subtract the root 2 or just move it to the other side. Same thing. 2 sine x is minus root 2. Then we divide by 2, right? So sine x is minus root 2 over 2. We good to there? This is where, guys and gals, the uh, unit circle will come in really handy. So now I'm saying the sine of what angle comes out negative root 2 over 2. We'll take out, this is what you want to have this exactly on your 3 by 5 card on Wednesday. And then you just want to look at this thing now and say, okay, where on that unit circle, here, let me, um, boom, all right, so there's the unit circle. So the question is, um, where do you see sine being negative root 2 over 2 on that unit circle? Now, remember, cosine is x, sine is y. So cosine, sine, cosine, sine. Cosine sine, cosine sine, cosine sine, cosine sine. Go ahead and put that in your 3x5 card if that's helpful for you. Cosine sine, cosine sine, cosine sine, cosine sine. Okay, so where do you see sine being negative root 2 over 2? Yeah, right. The negatives are small, aren't they? Right there. Right, right. Right there, come on. Right there, and yeah, and right here, right there, and right there. That's right. Those are the two places where the sine is negative root two over two. Just look at your, just look at your unit circle picture. So what are the angles there? They already. That's why I like about this chart. It's already got the radians there for you. You won't have to convert. Won't have to waste a bunch of time converting. It's just five pi over four, seven pi over four. Done. Does that make sense? Save a little time and effort. Just grab those two. 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, right on the charts. 225, 315, but they've even got them in radians. 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. So 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. Done. Next question. Is that good? Hopefully that'll make it easier. Oh, is it no solution on that one? All solutions. Oh, they want all solutions. Thanks. So you just got to add plus 2 and pi on those, right? Yeah, just throw a plus 2 in pi. Plus 2 in pi. Plus 2 in pi. It's D, right? Isn't that what it is? Yeah. 17D. For, and they do this because all solutions. Good. All right, let's move on. Number 18. Cosine 2x equals root 3 over 2. Okay. First thing is to go right to the unit circle. Circle. And say, where is cosine? Don't worry about 2x. We'll get to that in a minute. Just, just first off, cosine, positive, regular, root 3 over 2. Let's go to the unit circle. Where do I see cosine being positive, regular, root 3 over 2? Um, and you can find it quick. All students take calculus. Cosine is positive here and all are positive. Cosine is positive. So I mean those two quadrants, right? Because all are positive here. Cosine is positive there. We're talking about a positive cosine value. So positive root 3 over 2. Cosine right there and right there. Those two places. Pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. Good? Just grab them that quick. Right off the unit circle chart. So pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. So we say, okay, but, but that's not what x equals, that's what 2x equals. Pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. Don't have to convert or mess around. Good so far? But now remember, when, whenever you have, when you have, like 2x or 3x, kind of scribbly here, 
Whenever you have like 2x or 3x, you must do the plus 2n pi thing. Remember that? Even if they don't say all angles, just the fact that you have the 2x to the 3x. So make sure you know that. You must do the plus 2n pi thing. So I have to come in here and go, okay, plus 2n pi, plus 2n pi. Because there may be multiple answers. Remember that? So I grab the 2 off the unit circle, pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. That's quick. But it's 2x, not regular. That's the hard part of this question. See, the last one was just regular x, wasn't it? Regular x. Okay, so divide to solve, how do you solve for x? Divide through by 2. When I divide by 2, what do I do with the pi? I mean, I could go over 2, but that's kind of ugly. What's an easier way to divide a fraction by 2 than that? You just stick the 2 in the denominator, huh? Is that good? Everybody good with that? That's the easy way to divide a fraction by 2. Just multiply denominator by 2. That is dividing when you multiply the denominator, right? Same thing here. Divide by 2, put a 2 in the denominator, put a 2 there. Boom. So now we've got regular x. What is this? Pi over 12 plus n pi. And this is regular x is 11 pi over 12 plus, these cancel, n pi. Good so far? Pretty seeing what I did. I just went to the unit circle, grabbed the pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, did the 2 n pi because you have to do that whenever you have a double or triple angle. Then solve for x, divide through by 2. And now you've got to do the options, don't you? You've got to do n equals 0, and you'll get pi over 12. n equals 1, you'll get pi over 12 plus um, 1 pi. Pi over 12 plus 1 pi. Now, you do have to do this without a calculator. This is on the no calculator part. But you can do that, right? Pi over 12 plus 1 pi. What do you do? You make that pi over 12 plus 12 pi over 12. Everybody with me on that? You just multiply top and bottom by 12 to make the two denominators the same. And now you can combine them, and it's 13 pi over 12, because it's 1 plus 12 is 13 pi over 12. Good there, so pi over 12 and 13 pi over 12 so far. Questions I can't answer on that yet. Now, if you do n equals 2, you're going to get pi over 12 plus 2 pi, and that's more than 2 pi. So skip it. skip it because it's more than 2 pi right if it's 2 pi plus something then it's more than 2 pi and we don't we don't have any answers more than a full circle more than 2 pi so we're done there we just have the n equals 0 and the n equals 1 that's how you know when when you've gone too far when it gets over 2 pi right when it's 2 pi plus more then that's more than a full rotation so we've got two answers let's get the other two same thing over here let n equal 0. Let me separate these. n equals 0. Then you get x equals 11 pi over 12. If n equals 1, you get 11 pi over 12 plus 1 pi. Right? When n is 1, 11 pi over 12 plus 1 pi. And you know what to do. Top and bottom by 12. This is over, this is over 1. You know, put it over 1 so it looks like a fraction. Multiply top and bottom by 12. Again, that's, that's how we add fractions. We make the denominators the same, right? So what is that? It's going to be 11 pi plus 12 pi. It's going to be 23 pi over 12. Are you guys okay with that end? Can I help with that? Is that good? So again, we go to the unit circle. Look where cosines root 3 over 2, positive root 3 over 2. Grab pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Then solve for x, divide through by 2. And then let n be 0, n be 1, common denominators. n equals 2 is too much. 
more than 2 pi, n equals 0, n equals 1, common denominator, we get four answers, pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, 11 pi over 12, 23 pi over 12. There we go. All without a calculator, right? But you got your unit circle. Questions? Is that okay? That's a pretty hard one. Let's go to 19. So 19, almost done. 2 cosine squared x plus sine x minus 2 equals 0. So what's up there? That's, that's a hard one. What, what, what do you think when you first see that one? One minus Yeah, good job. Why are you thinking that, Chinoo? You're right on the money. Yeah, and what's the problem with cosine squared? Yeah, yeah, we don't want the mix. Exactly, exactly. Everybody see what, what, what's being set up here is correct, right? The problem, the main problem, when you see that, the main thing you want to think is, hey, we can't have a mix. We can't have, like, cosine and sine. We got to have it all cosine or all sine. We can't be mixing them. We don't really have a way to deal with that. Right? Not in the equation ones, anyway. There are these. So we've got to do something about that. And that's when you go, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I have a formula. Remember, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared, and vice versa. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine. We use that a lot. We're going to use that in a, just a minute here when we get to working on that identity homework. That comes up a lot, right? Cosine squared is, remember, that's a squared formula. not a re, That doesn't say regular cosine is 1 minus regular sine. No, it's cosine squared. Is 1 minus sine squared and vice versa. So I see this and I go, oh, I can replace that with 1 minus sine squared. Because then that'll get it all in terms of sine. Everybody's sine now. That is much better, right? It's all one trig function instead of a mix of two of them. So there we go. So distribute. What do you got? 2 minus 2 sine squared plus sine minus 2 is 0. Now what are we going to do? Well, 2 minus 2 just cancels, huh? That's just 0. So they're gone. Okay, that was nice. So now we have minus 2 sine squared x plus sine x is 0. What could we do now? You can... I, I like the, the front term to be positive. Just makes it easier to deal with. So you could multiply through by negative 1 if you want, or just move them to the other side. Same effect, whatever you like. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to jump them over here. Remember, whenever things go to the other side, they switch signs. So it'll be positive 2 sine squared minus sine squared. Or you could have just multiplied through by negative 1. Same effect, either way. Is that okay? Is that, do you see why I did that? It's easier when the front one is positive. It's just easier to deal with when the front one is positive. So just jump them over to the... If the front guy's negative, just jump them to the other side so the front one will be positive. Now what? What should I do now? you got to extract. Extract. Factor out. GCF. Yeah, remember factoring from your algebra days? Remember like if you have like 2a squared minus a or something. Remember how you can like take out an a and that leaves 2a minus 1? Remember that kind of thing from algebra? Because that a could go boom and boom and a times 2a would be 2a squared and a times 1 would be a. Remember that kind of thing? That's exactly what I'm going to do with the sign here. It's just like a big a. I'm just going to say, okay... He's got a sign and he's got a sign. They both have a sign in common. Let me say a word, though, about, because I know, I imagine you would be thinking, hey, Mr. Herman, but sometimes you factor like with two parentheses, and sometimes you factor with one parenthesis. Do you know the difference between those and how to recognize? It, if I had a third term, if I had like a plus seven or something out here, then I would be thinking about two parentheses factoring. So when you have three terms, you think about the two parentheses factor. You remember that from algebra? So it's called, you're reversing FOIL, basically. But if you just have two terms, you just do one parenthesis and you just take out the GCF. Just take out what's in common. It's easier factoring when there's only two terms. That's because this 2 minus 2 dropped out. All right, so what do they both have? Sine x. And then they're going to have two things inside with a minus. Two things inside with a minus. What are they? Well, whatever works. 
sine x times what would go back to be 2 sine squared? 2 sine. And sine x times what would go back to be plain sine? 1. Sine times 1 is sine. Good. See how if I distributed this, it would go back? Just took out what's in common. Okay. And now, what do you do from here? If two things times to be 0, that's what this is saying. This times this is equaling 0. If I said, hey, guys, and gals, two things I'm times and it's coming out 0. What does that mean? Either one of those could be 0 to make them type. The first one's 0, 0 times anything, 0. The second one's 0, anything times 0, 0, right? Either one could be 0 to make them times and be 0. So that means the first one, the first one could be 0, the sign alone. Or the second one, the 2 sine x minus 1 could be 0, right? Either one of those could be 0 to make them times and be 0, right? Okay, I'm going to go to a new page, if that's okay. So, so we have the, what number was this? This is number 19. We're almost done with it. So we have the first sine alone is 0, or the, what is it, 2 sine x minus 1 is 0, I think. Yeah. Right? So I got those two separate equal zeros. Now, how do you solve it? Well, this just goes to the unit circle now. Unit circle. Let me go to it. Where's our unit circle? Okay, where's the sine? I'll have to put this in. Cosine, sine, cosine, sine, cosine. Because now we're looking at these corner points, aren't they? With zeros and ones and negative ones, you're looking at these four edge, these four, these four points, right? It's going to be one or two of these points. So which ones have, what is it? Sine, sine, zero. Which one of those have sine, zero? zero. Uh, this one has sine, zero. This one has sine, zero. Doesn't it? So that's zero degrees and 180 degrees, or pi. I've kind of written over it. It's right there. So it's pi or zero. Those are the two places on the unit circle. So that means x is zero or pi. Good so far. Now, how about this one? Jump the 1 over, 2, sine is 1, divide by 2. So where's the sine positive a half? Go back to the unit circle. Sine all students, first, second, quadrant, first and second. There'll be two answers. First and second quadrant. There's almost always two answers. First and second quadrant, right? You're looking for two answers. Where's the sine positive a half? Yeah, it's right... Um, I can't find it, right? That's right here. That's positive. It almost looks like an A, but it's not. Sine's positive a half, and sine's positive a half. Right there, right? Pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Those two spots, sine is positive a half. Pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. There's our four answers. That okay? Questions I can answer? So you can do these hard ones, right? These are doable. Practice, but you can do them. You could do well. If you do well in this test, you can do well in any of the tests. This is the hardest one. Okay, I'll move on to number 20. Number 20. Um, sine squared minus cosine squared is zero. All right, so what are we going to do first? Yeah, same kind of thing. We've got to get it all sine or all cosine. It doesn't matter which one. You just can't have a mix, right? We don't want two trig functions. So I'll just say, hey, sine squared, you are 1 minus cosine squared. You can do it that way, or you could have made the cosine squared 1 minus sine squared. That's a little more tricky, though. It's after a minus sign. You have to be careful to distribute the minus. It's easier just to change the 1 in the front. Are you with me? So I'll just do that, and that is what? 1 minus 2 cosine. Everybody okay with that because it's minus 1 and minus 1? So it's minus 2 cosine squared. So everybody see how I changed that? Because sine squared is 1 minus, whoops, 1 minus cosine squared, right? Now, we're to here. How do I solve that? Well, subtract the 1 from both sides. 
divide by the negative 2. Cosine squared is positive a half. We good to there? I just get that piece alone. Good so far. And then how do I turn that into um, regular cosine? Got to square root it, remember? Square root on both sides. That's what turns it into regular rooting, cancels the square, makes it normal cosine. You have to turn it into normal cosine there. Everybody good with that? But when you do the square root, anybody remember? Good job. You've got to put plus or minus. Yes, let me make a note of that. When, when you root, you must do root and plus or minus root. Yeah, or you're missing half the answers. Right? Because anything squared, yeah. It's because like if you had x squared equals 4 and you just rooted it, you'd only get 2. But you know 2 or minus 2 squared is 4, huh? See how it's just true? So you have to remember the plus or minus when you... Um, I always tell my algebra students, if you put a roof on the house, you've got to go up and down the ladder. It's a goofball saying, but it just helped, helped them. Ever since I started saying it, it helped them remember. So if you put a roof on that, if you put a root on both sides, you've got to remember plus or minus, like up and down the ladder. Um, all right, so to put a roof on your house. All right, so what is, now what is root 1 over 2? That looks weird. We don't leave it that way. That means a root on the bottom. Remember how we never leave roots on the bottom? Root over the whole fraction means root on the top and root on the bottom, and we never leave roots on the bottom. So what do I do to get rid of that root from the bottom there? Multiply top and bottom by root 2. Now let's do the multiply thing. 1 times 2 is root 2 on the bottom. 2 times 2 is root 4. Root 2, root 2, root 4. Root 1, root 2, root 2, right? And then what is the root of 4? 2. two. So it's plus or minus root 2 over plane 2, isn't it? That we recognize, huh? That's one of our recognized values. So we just go to the unit circle now and find all the places where cosine is either positive or negative root 2 over 2. And if you look on there, you'll find pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. All those places you'll find cosine is either positive or or negative, root 2 over 2. It's all the middle of the quadrant places, right off the unit circle. This is unit circle. And there we go. We're done with the practice exam. Is that okay? Questions on that? I'm going to leave that behind.